ground. We shall fight in the field and in the street. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark upon the Great Crusade. The eyes of the world are upon you. Hi peeps, this is Pexler, and before we dive into some Hell Let Loose news on the Hurricane map, let's take a peep at some other games that may tempt your interest while you wait for the call to arms and the return of Hell Let Loose. Firstly, one game that keeps popping up on every Hell Let Loose video and in the forums is Squad World War 2. No, no, no that's unfair, I mean postscript them. It's certainly better than COD World War 2, isn't it? Oof, that looked quite a nice little fuss, didn't it? There's a machine gun. I finally got around to having a little play with this. I've always been more of an armour fan than squad, as they seem to hit the nail on the head when it comes to that fine line of simulation and fun, a balance you certainly need to keep you interested in games of that nature and scale. Now don't get me wrong, I don't hate it, it's just not for me. I like the sound, some of the way it looks, such as the horsey gliders and the vehicles, but I think they need to tone down the vegetation. It's absolutely enormous. Get the scales right, but that's what testing is for. I'm not sure what these lot are doing. Doing something. I'm not quite sure. Some kind of like, uh, they're all doing the, the Pug G, the Pug G fucking, uh, Pug G lane. I, mean, I still find it hard to judge distance on post scripting, and that's down to a few things. But I miss the fluidness that other games offer. It's too orchestrated by armchair generals and there's plenty of salt about that's for sure. That being said, I've had some decent games but mostly salty and a little boring at times. For me it lacks that kind of fun and freedom I'm used to. But you may like it and enjoy it. There's certainly an audience and a fan base, one that's desperate for World War II based theme, which the squad fan community have got with Postscript. Shots on the right, shots on the right. Now the second game has been in development for some time, a few years actually, but they're about to start some closed testing, although they did have some kind of strange chef style battle royale out recently. The invites are out, but if you missed it the doors are still open and they will be sending out invites regularly. The game is called Enlisted and it's from the War from the family. It's an MMO, but don't let that stop you or put you off, it's free. You just might have to pay to win, but it looks like it's worth taking a look at. I'll put a link in the description for the sign up page. All you need is a gauging account. Hit the alpha test button and wait out for an invitation. So a little bit more about Enlisted. The information straight from the web page says that Enlisted is an MMO, squad based shooter which is built around some of the most important and famous episodes of World War II. In Enlisted, players can experience these famous battles on a massive scale for real life heroes of those encounters, the soldiers. Now one clue I did find in how this may develop as an MMO, and what I mean by that is the pay to win element, is in the team play text. Weapon and character capabilities, all of these will be essential parts of Enlisted. Players will gradually unlock new characters who will all have different playstyles. Additionally, diversity in the battle will also be granted by a wide weaponry selection. Just like in a real war, where you rarely can see two absolutely identical rifles. I'll give you a clue, uh, in a real war we see thousands and thousands of absolutely identical rifles. But in Enlisted, they will have their own features and their own history. So just be aware of that. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. Now, if you subscribe to my channel and you've watched some of my other Hell Let Loose videos, you know I like to add a little bit of real life to the story. So without any further delays, let's get back to Hell Let Loose. We're all awaiting the news of the coming beta and the weekend events, and just what they may entail. New classes, roles, vehicles, maps, who knows? Now if you keep an eye on the Trello page, i.e. the roadmap for Hell Let Loose, you may have noticed some updates. But what there was mention of was several features. 
So what is feature 001, 002 and 003? It's ready for wide testing, but it will be revealed later. Tell me now, please. German crewmen are ready for internal testing, and we know that the US crewmen are also in the queue. But I think one of those bad boys could be the bipod deployment, and maybe some smoke. What do you think it could be? Now to Herken Forest. Now the walkthrough you're about to see is not mine. The quality may not be as good as you'd expect or know to be a true reflection of what you've seen on Hell Let Loose. That's because it's from a Twitch stream. And it's from Hell Let Loose's very own wizard, Halotronics. I'd love to be able to take a peek in there, but I'm not worthy. But it's no fun without you guys being in there with me really, shooting the shit out of them trees. The Battle for Herkin Forest. Don't mix this up with the Battle of the Bulge. If the Battle of Herkin Forest would have been a success, it may not have been a Battle of the Bulge. Also known as the Bloody Herkin. And throughout history, the woods and the area have taken many names and many armies. Just ask the ancient Romans. The Battle of Herkin Forest took place from the 19th of September to the 16th of December 1944, involving a total of 120,000 American troops and 80,000 German troops. The fighting was intense and fierce. It was tree to tree. The forest was often covered with mist and fog, with unforgiving terrain from rocks, crevices, creeks, hills, mud and snow. It's fair to say that both sides were under constant bombardment and suffered from lack of food, supplies, rest and battle fatigue beyond measures. By November the 13th, the officers of every single rival company in the American 28th Division had either been wounded or killed. So why don't you hear much about it? James Gavin, the commander of the 82nd Airborne, Jordan Battle of Herkin Forest, after the war, said, It was the most costly, most unproductive and most ill-advised battle our army had ever fought in. The Germans fiercely defended the area, because unbeknown to the US forces, it was to serve as a staging area for the 1944 Winter Offensive, and also because the mountains gave access to the Ruhr Dam at the head of the Ruhr Reservoir. Objectives changed hand daily, and no one knew where the line started or finished. There's mention of a first aid post being manned by medics of both sides treating wounded as they came in. Now the Germans successfully held the region until they launched their last ditch offensive into the Ardennes. This was launched on the 16th of December, which ended the Herkin Offensive and went on to become what we know to be the Battle of the Bulge. The Battle of the Bulge gained more press and public attention, leaving the Battle of Herkin Forest largely forgotten. But certainly not to those who fought there. The US forces suffered greatly, casualties and deaths recorded and still disputed to this day, ranging from 33,000 and some suggest as high as 55,000. That's almost as many as the Vietnam War. The Germans also suffered losing over 28,000 troops. Okay. Now one story I found from the battle interested me. It reminded me of a German grave I found in the company of British troops in a church in Normandy. This one involved a German lieutenant by the name of Frederick Lengfeld. On November the 10th, Lengfeld's company were exhausted and they'd been decimated. They'd been fighting over Forrester's Lodge in the woods to the south of where Herkin War Cemetery now stands. At the time, the lodge had been used as a shelter by both sides, dependent on whoever held it. He managed to drive the Americans out the following morning. As they retreated, one of the men ran directly into an area which the Germans called the Wild Sow, a minefield, with disastrous consequences. Hours passed and no one came for him. Unable to take the man's cries any longer, Lengfeld decided to man to rescue himself. He led the team of medics beside the road until he got opposite the American soldier, and on his own he entered the minefield. A short while later, he stood on an anti-personnel mine which exploded. Suffering from serious internal injuries, Lengfeld was taken to a first aid station, where he died later that evening. So what do you think of the map? Now looking at Herkin, it will certainly bring some challenges to us as players. The terrain, the map layout, will be very interesting. You certainly have to have your wits about you and take advantage of the terrain when able. The effects will add an eerie feel completely different from that of the Normandy map. Now what map would you like to see? in Hell Let Loose. Peeps, thanks for watching and taking the time to leave comments both here and on the forums. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button and leave a comment, I'd love to hear from you. I can't wait to catch up with you guys once Hell Let Loose is back online, but until then, keep your eyes peeled on the forums, Discord and the Trello page. Adios amigos. We'll never surrender.